The fruit and vegetable juice market is projected to reach $173 billion by 2024. This growth in the fruit and vegetable juice market is driven by increasing demand for a healthy food from an increasingly health-conscious consumer base. We drink these juices for the health benefits. However, in order to ensure the safety for consumers, many customers use a heat pasteurization process. The problem with this is this heating process destroys many of the very vitamin, minerals, and enzymes that you're looking for in the first place when drinking healthy juices. This is where cold pressed juices comes in. If you haven't heard of cold pressed juices, you will. It is a key driver in the juice market because it uses a process that keeps the vitamins, minerals, and enzymes you're looking for intact. It uses a process called high pressure processing or HPP. Instead of using heat to cook the microbes to death, it uses pressure to crush them to death. 87,000 PSI of pressure to be exact. Those that use HPP will have a mark, the high pressure certified mark. That's how you know they use HPP. But during the HPP process, the bottles are submerged in water. How do we know that during this process, there aren't micro leakers that can cause possible contamination in the product? My name is Daniel Tian from Tian Innovations, a company on the forefront of food packaging technologies. In this edition of Tea Innovations Innovations, we will be gathering data on how bottles are really holding up in the HPP environment. We will be visiting an HPP tolling company, Hydrofresh, and with GK Packaging, a bottle supplier, we will examine the performance of various bottles. I'm here with Mike Maloney, head of sales at GK Packaging, Gene Kuzma, owner founder of GK Packaging, and Tristan Herstall, product engineer at GK Packaging. Can you just spend a moment talking about what differentiates the GK bottle from other bottles you see in the industry? So we looked to design a cap that made it with a bottle that was designed specifically for HPP testing. We wanted to prevent a ingress and egress of any liquid. So we created a three seal system. So basically a lot of the bottles out there have a one seal or two seal. Whereas one of the things that make a GK bottle unique is you've designed it with a three seal. Ideally, for it to perform well in the HPP environment. Is, is that right? That's correct. The standard DBJ closure that just happens to work with HPP some of the time. Correct. Whereas in your case, you actually designed the closure with HPP in mind. With all these advantages, we're really hoping to see a difference here in our testing. More consistency. And zero fail rates zero through fail rates. HPP. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Here we have a bottle with the high concentrated tracer dye on the inside and this will allow us to test whether or not through the HPP process there's any egress of material. We have a round of test bottles all prepped and ready to go into the machine. 87,000 PSI is what they're going to be subjected to, which is pretty phenomenal if you think about it, because the max pressure on the tires on my car is a mere 44 PSI. 44 compared with 87,000, it's really easy to understand why the pressure can crush the microbes to death. Really exciting. Let's see what happens. Like you lose juice, big deal. But if you have contaminants going in your juice, yeah. now we got a problem, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we have our control here. Let's just go ahead and open up a few and, 
and at least subjectively see kind of how some of these did today, yeah. So the moment we've all been waiting for, what are the results? Well, here they are. As mentioned, we tested four samples of bottles used in the industry for HPP. Sample A, Sample B, Sample C, and the GK packaging bottle. We tested them for both ingress and egress, meaning during HPP, does any outside foreign matter like water make its way into the bottle, which is ingress? Or does any of the bottle contents make its way out of the bottle, which is egress? Here it is in a more easily readable graph. As you can see, all the samples had some egress leakers. Although this graph doesn't show the volume of leakage, some were very small. And as you can see from this picture, egress really only becomes a concern if you lose a significant amount of volume, thus affecting your stated selling serving size. Back to the graph. However, the most concerning here is ingress leakers, that is, unintended foreign matter entering the bottle. All the samples had zero ingress leakers, except for sample A here, with a whopping 13.1%. Here's a picture of the selection of sample A bottles after undergoing ingress leak testing. You can clearly identify the ones with UV sensitive dye that made it inside the bottle there on the right side. What do we learn from this? Well, that just because a bottle or any packaging appears to pass HPP, it doesn't mean it necessarily does without leakers. It is important to select the proper bottle and packaging partner for your application that is validated through thorough data testing. Thank you to HydroFresh for having us and for hosting us this day so we can collect the data. And all your help. Tremendous help. Tremendous help. Yeah. Safe travels, guys. Too. Gene, pleasure. I hope you enjoyed taking this data gathering journey with us and thank you for joining us for this edition of Teen Innovations Innovations. Here at Teen Innovations, solving complex problems and being at the cutting edge of what's possible with food and food packaging is what we do. If you have any topics with food, food science or food packaging you would like us to consider in the future, please let us know. Also, if your company has any challenging projects for us to solve or would like to collaborate with us please reach out and we would be happy to help.